Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, Nick Latus is in Ireland on the trail of Falladea with Tommy Hines, better known to many as Shamrock Shrek, plus Tim Pillbeam and Byron test three straight pull rifles and pick the best optic for driven bar shooting. Sporting rifles, Nick Latus has made his yearly pilgrimage to Ireland, visiting close friend and stalking guide Tommy Hines for the fallow call. It's an early start on the first day, but that doesn't faze these boys. Uh, I've been coming over the three, four years now. Uh, I've been, met Tommy Hines on, on a driven boar hunt in Germany and he invited me over and they're just a good bunch of guys and the hunting is uh, it's totally different to what we do in England. Uh, with it being pasture land instead of arable land, and uh, it's, it's just brilliant, it's fantastic hunting. With the light just lifting, they both scour the boggy pastures. Tommy knows there will be deer here somewhere, they just have to locate them. In Ireland, you're talking very open open spaces, cover is minimal. Uh, okay, there's, there's plenty of woodland, but the deer are out on the open on the open, uh, the grasses and the bogs, and getting in, in within a, a respectable range for a clean shot is, is very difficult at times. We got within a, a reasonable distance, around about the 200 mark, and uh, I managed to get into a hedgerow where a nice safe position, you know, a nice safe shot and uh, I managed to shoot one of the doors. There is a lot of deer to be shot, a lot of, a lot of fallow, uh, especially around where we are you know, at, at the minute, there's a lot of fallow, uh, but poaching is, is, uh, is, is widespread throughout southern and northern Ireland, and it is a big problem with the, with the deer numbers, mm. so the herds have to be managed. Next shots are the order of the day, ensuring none of the prime venison is wasted as ultimately this beast is restaurant bound. Nick is a skilled marksman and Tommy is confident in his abilities. After confirming death, a quick assessment of the fallow's overall condition shows it to be in good general order and it has clearly done well this winter. The beast bled, Nick separates and ties off the esophagus in advance of the gralloch. Job done, the deer is upturned to drain any remaining blood and clots before extraction. We literally uh, dragged, dragged the carcass, extracted it to, uh, to the side of, of the road uh, to be picked up and we stalked on. The other two run off into, into uh, the woodland, so we decided we'd go across and try and cut them off. Uh, and we'd only perhaps gone three, four hundred metres uh, across a couple of barbed wire fences and uh, we, we, we spotted the deer that were laid down in some tall grasses. Our cameraman needed a wide angled lens for this shot. Hidden among the reeds a shot is difficult. Nick has to bide his time, reposition and look for a clear bullet path. This terrain is boggy and Nick's Black Islander gators are an essential item. I need to move higher Tommy, I can't get a clear shot. Okay, okay. Move, move it in. 
my best rest was when I, when I was down. Uh, I couldn't I, all I could see with the tips of uh, the doe's ears. So we had to move position to where I could get a, a better vantage point and uh, managed to shoot shoot the calf first. Where she lifts her head. And uh, the door, she run, I re reloaded and she run and uh, she managed to uh, circle right round behind us. And uh, we, so we quickly moved position and uh, managed to shoot her as well. Can you take your shot whenever you get a clear shot? Excellent day, yeah, yeah, this is why I keep going back. Mm. So it's crack the crack first and uh, the shooting second though, always. Tommy, we've had quite a good morning. Nick's managed to shoot three fallow. Is it always as easy as it looked this morning? Not always as easy as it was this morning. No, we were very fortunate this morning. Everything went well for us, you know what I mean? We got here just before, before daylight, done a bit of glassing, saw the animals, you know what I mean? They, they weren't aware of it. Everything was in our favour. Mm -hmm. Wind and everything was in our favour, so... We had a good stable, you know what I mean, good, good place to shoot from, safe backstops. Everything went well. It doesn't always go like that, you know what I mean? As Nick and Tommy set about the extraction and gralic of the third fallow of the morning, there's time to reflect on what has been a bumper day. 3D before breakfast there, not a bad morning's work. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The government has ruled out another U-turn on badgers. Pilot culls will definitely go ahead in two areas in Gloucestershire and Somerset as early as June, Environment Secretary Owen Patterson said. Around 5,000 badgers will be culled as part of the six-week trial. A reserve cull area in Dorset is also being prepared. More in the next issue of Modern Gamekeeping. Experts have warned that African rhino populations are on the verge of decline. Nearly 2,400 rhino have been poached since 2006, meaning population growth is at an 18-year low. Already in 2013, one rhino has been lost to poaching every 11 hours. Sporting Rifle magazine raised £10,000 to save the rhino last year and will launch more initiatives later this year. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has exposed RSPB claims about the death of a golden eagle in May 2012. The RSPB went to the media while an official inquiry was still ongoing last year, saying the eagle had suffered an appalling and lingering death in an illegal spring trap. But the SGA conducted its own inquiry and found there was no evidence of wrongdoing. It went on to question whether bodies with a clear political agenda should be involved in official investigations. Duck populations may be at risk if wildfowling decreases, US scientists have warned. Researchers at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission said 98% of money raised from duck shooting licenses in the USA was spent on wildlife habitats, with resulting benefits to the entire ecosystem. But declines in shooting have led to a loss of funding for habitat conservation. Fears have grown that if USA duck populations fall, the UK population will follow suit. And finally, Bracken control agent Azulam can once again be used across the uplands of the UK. It had been banned effective from the 1st of January, but DEFRA has now given emergency authorisation for its use for the rest of 2013. Bracken poses a threat to livestock and vegetation if left uncontrolled, and can have a devastating effect on grouse populations. The Countryside Alliance said the news would bring relief to upland managers and the shooting community. That was the Shooting Show News. Tim, we've been uh, playing with some of these straight pools on your range today. Um, you've had them for a few months. Can you tell me a bit about each rifle? First of all, we've got the Merkel Helix. Uh, a straight pool rifle. One of the unusual aspects of this, basically, is the actual bolt uh, handle itself. Only for every inch it moves, the actual bolt head moves two inches. So basically, the result of that is actually a very, very fast action. And also with it, which is slightly different to the blazer, is the action doesn't actually come out, the belt, bolt shroud doesn't actually come out the back of the, uh, the action, so it's all very, very compact. Right. Uh, but like the blazer, when once you've fired a shot, it stays cocked because it's got uh, driven ball shooting in mind, doesn't That's it? That's right. So it's got the, the uh, cocking lever in the back here, so once you push forward, it's actually ready to shoot. And when you carry the rifle as such, it cannot 
possibly far, so it's actually perfectly safe. So you actually can have uh, a round loaded, the cocking lever off, and it's actually perfectly safe. But this Merkel's quite a versatile rifle. I believe the barrel comes off as well. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it is apparently one of the fastest switchable barrels uh, on the market. It's very simple. Four end comes off, push the lever down, wow. and now she pops. That's as quick. simple as that. And you've got the, uh, the bolt head in the end of the barrel. Put it back in, leave it back up, and ready to go. Simple as that. It is as simple as that. The Blas are professional, uh, and he's just come out in, in this country with the, the thumb hole stock, which is slightly unusual. Probably not the most nicest looking thing, perhaps. No. <laughs> but we have a space age, yeah. But you know, but it's, it's actually fabulous. So, standard R8 professional. See, with the thumb hole stock, that's so comfortable. The first thing you do, you pick this up, is the, the surface is here, it's so grippable. It is ergonomically, I think you found the center. I did, I was, I was surprised. I didn't. I, I never liked the look of the stock, but when I picked it up when I was, you know, in your armory yesterday, um, I was pleasantly surprised when I put it in my hand. It does feel really good. Yeah. So it's standard R8, basically. Very quick. You see with this, the actual back of the bolt, the actual straight pull bolt comes back behind the action. So, hence that's why the Merkel is slightly different. Just a slightly different design of actually achieving the same thing. Sure. And also you've got the, the cocking lever in the back as well. Okay. Okay, right. but very, very light, mm. very, very pointable. Uh, I imagine absolutely superb for stalking. Okay. And lastly, we have something lastly, a bit different. Yeah. We've got here the Lynx uh, Light Hunter. Okay. Um, very unusual, actually, in some ways. Lovely laminated stock, which is nothing too unusual about that. But what it has got here is once it is a straight pull, but the actual locking of the actual bolt is a bar which goes through the kind of the middle part of the bolt. Mm -hmm. Very unusual. So just push forward. And it's slightly different action to this. You've actually got to grab it with your fingers as opposed to your thumb, the other one. But smooth. You probably won't ever witness such a smooth action. They, I think Lynx basically, they started with a biathlon um, uh, shooting in Finland basically and they just kind of developed rifles off from this and this is basically based on that and once again it's a very light sporting rifle. So the first test that we put all the rifles through was shooting the moving target which is really what they're all about. Um, how did you find each one? We start with the Merkel Helix. Uh, very very fast, cycles around very mm. very quickly, um, able to maintain sight picture every single time, bang 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 bang. I thought it was actually brilliant. Yeah, no, I, it's really light rifle, so it comes into the shoulder nicely. It's not a lot of weight in, in the arms, and having that sort of two-for-one uh, cycling is just brilliant because it, it is just so fast and rapid in the hand. I, I think that also with the, the uh, European stock on it, mm. it's, just, it's just nicely, it's actually perfect for that type of shooting style, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, that was the one thing I noticed if we move on to the blazer was that although the thumb hole stock felt great, I kept on catching my thumb on the top of it every time I was lifting my hand off the bolt and putting it back. Yeah. Whereas with a tr more traditional stock, you don't have that yeah. problem. I think it's just quite a high comb, wasn't it? And I just, it's ideal for stalking, I think. Superb mm. stalking, uh, maybe fox control as well. Yeah. Um, but just wee bit on the high side. But every time you cycled, you had to kind of grab it. It's just mm. a bit slow, perhaps. Yeah. Trigger? I, I, about the trigger? Well, yeah, the trigger I found was a little bit fine for this, yeah. but I mean, they are adjustable. So I think if you were using it for driven shooting, I'd be tempted to make it a little bit, yeah. uh, a little bit harder. We haven't actually tested, I don't know how light that trigger is, but it's no. a seriously light trigger. I think, I mean, with gloves, I'll be struggling with that. So yeah, no, so, I would be as well. But perhaps, yeah. It's, it it took me a little while to get used to it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I nearly shot your car. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, the Lynx. Now, it's the first time I've ever... Um, you know, how to play with the links before, but yeah. it, was, it took a little while to get used to it. But I actually quite enjoyed it. It's certainly slick. Yeah, yeah. I think the the Merkel and the and the Blazer both in 308. Mm. Okay, the links in 3006, bigger caliber, well, not bigger caliber, but uh, more powerful caliber, mm. more recoil to deal with. But also the actual sliding bolt, slightly different technique involved as mm. well. So it's maybe not as fast as the other two. No. But just sort of just a lovely action to actually use. Yeah, it is. It's really slick, but I think it possibly is just a bit slower in that it's a really long pull. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but you know, it, it is, it's a different technique to use it as well. And I'm sure if you were to spend a lot of time with each one of these, you'd you know, soon get to grips with it. Yeah, yeah. With both Tim and Byron comfortable with the rifles, it's time to have a bit of fun and burn some ammo. They want to see just how quick these straight pulls are. Putting the moving target away, they line up on a stationary row silhouette aiming for the kill zone. Soon the shots are flying and the stopwatch is running. Of course, it's not just a case of rattling off three shots as fast as they can, they want to be reasonably accurate as well. Ready, go. Go. With the three rifles showing their best and average times taken, the results bear out Byron and Tim's conclusion. It is likely that given the standard sporting stock, the blazer would be a lot faster to operate and probably much closer to the links. As they stand though, it comes third on speed with the thumb hole stock. So the scopes we had on were very low power, wide field of vision, but they all had different reticles. What did you find worked best for you today? Well, the Leica had a, uh, the popular standard duplex uh, reticle with the red dot. So it's a standard hunting scope. The other two, the Zeiss and the Strosky, were basically running target scopes. Very, very different applications. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the Zeiss had a single dock, whereas the Strosky had a dot with a circle around it, which made it easier to see things. And obviously we had just had the red dot with the, the, the uh, Leica. I think the Strosky, well that, that reticle itself, was a lot, lot easier for us to actually pick up on the target mm. and carry on through. I don't know what you thought. Yeah, I know that. I mean, that basically echoes what my thoughts were. I, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is about it, but the circle around the dot just seems to hone your eyes in, and you do seem to get on the target a lot quicker than I found with the other two reticles. But um, yeah, I think if I had to pick one to go driven ball shooting tomorrow with, it would be uh, that reticle on the Swarovski, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30 p.m. UK time. This is The Shooting Show.